In this lecture, I'll talk about the churn connection. So in the first part, I'll define the del bar operator on vector bundles. In the second part, I'll define the so-called churn connection. And in the last part, I'll show existence and uniqueness of the churn connections. Okay, so to start off, let us take pi here, a, so, so rather V, a holomorphic vector bundle with pi being the projection map and X, a complex map. So this will be the setting for the entire lecture. And as we will recall, right? So del bar is an operator that acts on the sheaf of smooth sections on V and takes you on the sheaf of smooth sections of V tensored with uh, zero one forms. So this is by definition, right? So sheaf of smooth sections of V with T star zero one X. <coughs> okay, and how does this work? Well, uh, you, you define this operator locally, right? So if you take E1 to EK, Right, so this is a uh, uh, frame, holomorphic frame of V on U, which is an open subset of X, right? K being the rank of the bundle V. Then if you take a alpha, a smooth section of u on v, right? Then you can write the alpha as sum of alpha j ej, right? Alpha j being smooth sections on u, smooth functions on u. And then how do you fail del bar of alpha? Well, del bar of alpha obviously is nothing but del bar of sum of alpha j ej and but this is the definition here nothing but del bar of the alpha j times ej so tensor here and then obviously this will be all of these elements in this sum here are inside c infinity zero one u v and now what you need to check is that due to V being a holomorphic vector bundle, so since V2x is holomorphic, we get that del bar is well defined independently. Your choice of your trivialization in J. <coughs> okay, so you might be wondering, well, if del bar exists, you might be asking this somewhat rhetorical question. So does del also exist? So del going from sheaf of smooth sections of V to sheaf of smooth sections of one zero forms, does it exist? And then the answer is, in general, no, unfortunately, Dale does not exist. However, so if there's additional structure, so if VH is a Hermitian structure, it's a Hermitian vector bundle, then an analog of del does exist. And this analog will be understood uh, using the churn connection. Say, 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 say more about that later. So right now, let's just say this is our motivation. We also want to understand how one can define a del operator that sort of acts analogously to, to del bar. Okay. so. We, we, we have a Hermitian structure now. So VH is a Hermitian holomorphic vector bundle. 
right? So, so, so what does this mean? So locally, right, we have some coefficients, let's call them H, J, K, right? Which are nothing but H, E, J, E, K, where E, J, E, K are uh, these uh, elements of this trivial trivializing section from above here. I used the same notation previously, right? And now you get these nice smooth functions on U. And of course, HJK, as you know, is a Hermitian uh, matrix. Right, positive definite for all. So let me put the X here. Maybe I can. So HJKX is a Hermitian matrix for all X in U. And so positive definite. Okay. Uh, okay, good. So, all right. So we are moving towards the definition of the churn. So how does that come about? Well, first, let's let's recall what the connection is to begin with. So so we say that D, right, going from the sheaf of smooth sections of V to the sheaf of uh, smooth uh, sections of V across T star X is a C linear connection. Right, if, well, first of all, it's C linear and D F times V is equal to D F tensor V or rather, well, if, uh, so, or rather, so V tensor F, if I want to use that uh, particular notation. So V tensor DF, where F is a smooth function on U and V is a smooth section of V on U. All right, and again, U is a sub open subset of X. Okay, so this is the definition of a C linear connection. There's lots and lots of these. Now, uh, let's take it one notch further. So we want to work with connections that interact well with uh, our Hermitian structure. So we say that D is metric if the following holds. So if, uh, if for all sections V, W, V on an open subset, capital U, D H U V, All right? So this is a one form, U is equal to H of D V W plus H of V D W. Okay, so this is the definition of a metric connection. So this, uh, it's, it's fair to say that a connection is metric if, if it satisfies a product rule with respect to the Hermitian uh, metric. Now, uh, you, you, th this type of condition you already saw from Riemannian geometry and already there you saw that this is a nice thing to have, but even this does not make uh, your connection uh, unique. So you have to add another word. In case of Riemannian geometry, you ask your connection to be torsion free. And then there's this nice theorem that shows you that there's a unique uh, torsion free connection associated to every Riemannian metric. That's called the Levi-Civita connection. Here, you need to add a different condition. So you, what, what we have here is a holomorphic vector bundle. 
So we ask D to interact with the holomorphic structure. So then we say that D is churn if it is metric and it's zero one part. So if I compose D with the projection onto zero one forms, oops, so zero one forms, I get del bar back, right? And again, so pi zero one is the projection from T star X cross C onto T star X zero one. And of course, there's also pi one zero going into T star zero X. Okay, so a churn connection is metric plus it's zero one part is the del bar operator that we know exists. So, so this, this condition tells you that there's a good interaction with the uh, complex structure on the bundle. And this condition tells you that there is good interaction with the uh, Hermitian metric that you've chosen. And then somehow the next theorem tells you that actually you need both the Hermitian metric and the complex structure to uh, have existence and uniqueness of this type of uh, churn connection. So let me just state that. So theorem, so if V is, VH is a Hermitian holomorphic vector bundle, then there exists a unique churn connection D. Okay, so let's let's prove this. So we start out by arguing uniqueness. Oh, be before before I get to the proof. So let me remark uh, how this relates to uh, our motivating uh, question, right? So the motivating question was whether there exists a uh, definition of, of D for a holomorphic vector bundle. And the answer is, so in case there is a, a Hermitian structure, then one definition of this D would be, so define the D operator as the one zero part of the churn connection. Okay, so this could be a definition. Now, uh, obviously this definition of del depends on, heavily depends on the choice of uh, Hermitian uh, structure and that's okay. Somehow that's okay. Okay, so now let me give the proof. So we start by uniqueness. So, uh, so let's suppose, so suppose there exists a churn connection D. Okay, so such a churn connection needs to satisfy the product rule, right? So it needs to be metric. So that just means Now let's take the pi, the zero one part of uh, this identity. So that means I'm separating this identity into its one zero and zero one part, right? Because where all of these, both the left and the right hand side is a smooth section of V valued complex one forms, right? So I'm, I, I just, I'm just interested in the zero one part. So the zero one part, on the left hand side, you will see this and the uh, one zero part. Well, what you will see here is the one zero part of D, V, W. Now due to the Hermitian property, right? When you take the, oops, yeah, sorry. So, so here rather, 
since I'm taking the zero one part, this will be the zero one part of V plus the one zero part. Okay, so maybe maybe since I already have introduced this notation here, I'll just stick with it. This is not standard in the literature. Okay, so now see what's going on. So uh, what's going on is I will get that H V del W is equal to del bar H V minus H del bar V W. Okay, now here on the right hand side, right? So only depends on H, right? Plus the del bar operator, which depends only on the holomorphic uh, structure. So, and, and this identity holds for all V and W smooth sections of V on an open set U. Right, so this implies, due to the fact that H is non-degenerate, that del bar H W is well defined. It, it, it has to be unique. It's unique. Uniquely defined. Okay, but since D W is what? D W is just, uh, sorry, so I meant del of W is uniquely defined, right? So, but what's DW? Well, DW is del W plus del bar W. Obviously this part is going to be unique. So, 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 so what, what I should have said for this part, I don't worry about the uniqueness, right? The uniqueness question is whether del of age is, is unique or not, but I just understood that this is unique. So then this whole thing has to be unique as well. Okay, so that takes care of uniqueness. So as far as existence goes, we can use uh, uniqueness to our advantage. So existence, regarding existence, since we know that if there exists a churn connection, it has to be unique, we, need, we just need to show existence on uh, open patches where I have a trivialization. So existence enough to show existence locally, right? And then due to uniqueness, the local constructions that you show that exist has to be the same on the overlap. So due to uniqueness, local constructions have to be the same due to uniqueness. Okay, so let me argue that indeed locally the churn con connection does exist, right? So recall E1 to EK, right? We're taking a holomorphic trivialization. So this is a local frame for V. Okay, so I just need to figure out a way to define uh, the del part. Right, because the del bar part is uh, has to be the so the zero one part rather has to be the del bar operator. So how should we do this? Well, let's see what the del bar. So, so let me let me do a bit of uh, preliminary analysis here. So if I pick a smooth Uh, section of V on U, right? Then I can write the U as sum of the EJ times some UJ, right? Where the UJ are 
smooth functions, C valued smooth functions on U. Okay, so what's, uh, what's del H of U? Well, since uh, we're talking about connections, what you will see is this will be what? So this will be, okay, so let, 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 me, let, let me take a step back. What is D of U? Well, D of U is D of UJ, EJ, all the way summed up. So this will be D UJ tensor EJ plus UJ times D EJ. Okay, so now I can separate this into del and del bar part. So then I will get what? Uh, maybe before that, I want to take this one step further. So to say that, and then here, each DEJ, I will write as a sum of alpha KJ tensor E K, right? Where the alpha KJ are just smooth sections on U, right? So let me just add that in here. The alpha KJ. Answer e k, right? And then you should think of the alpha kj as the Christoffel symbols of d. Uh, so, so here it's a, okay. Maybe I want to clarify this. So the alpha kj smooth sections of V tensor T star X C. Okay, but we want to churn connection, right? So when I take the Dale part, so when I take pi zero one of D, right? That should equal del bar, right? So that means when, I take pi zero one of d u, that should equal del bar of u, but that is just del bar of u j tensor e j. Okay, so when I compare with this expression, this tells me that the del part, which is pi one zero d of u, that should equal del uj tensor ej plus alpha kj tensor ek. So actually the alpha kj are, I can be more specific about them. They are one zero forms. Okay, so how can we compute them? Well, let's plug them in to the let, let's, uh, let's play around with the product formula. So, so let me plug in, simply plug in H, J, E, K into H. So let me take del of this. So del of this is del of H, J, K, right? But also I can use the product formula to get H of uh, del H E J E K plus H of E J del bar E K. Okay, del bar of E K is zero because E K is a holomorphic section of V. So all in all, I get, using our local uh, description, that del of hjk is equal to h of 
alpha l j e l e k. Maybe I want a different letter here, M. So all in all, I get that del of H, J, K is equal to alpha M, J times H, M, K. So what you will get from here is alpha M, J is equal to H, transpose inverse times del of H transpose. Okay, so we get from here that, you know, our, uh, the Christoffel coefficients of our uh, connections do exist, right? So, so del H indeed exists. So that D, which is equal to del H plus del bar, is a metric plus it is uh, turn. So in, in, in one word, it's turn. So the del is turn. OK, that's it. All right, so that finishes the proof of the existence and uniqueness of the churn connection. Thank you for your attention.